same thing, you'll appreciate what they're going through. You'll understand it. You'll be able to pray for them better. You'll be able to help them more. That's the comfort that comes from this healthy heartache. Now, one more thing, and then I'm going to close. It'll be a quick thing. What are the keys to healthy heartache? The keys to healthy heartache. How do we get to that place? How do we get to the point where we're able to do what Jesus advocates? He says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What does it take to get us to that place? Well, there's three renewed sights, I believe, that we have to see to get to that place. First, we need a renewed sight of God's holiness. See, when we see God as he truly is, we'll see ourselves as we are. We'll see our world as it is, not as we wished it were. You see this all throughout the Bible. I think of Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah says in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord in his temple. When he encountered God and the holiness of God, what did he say? Woe is me. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. See, when he saw God's holiness, he saw his sinfulness and the sinfulness of the land. The same is for us. When you catch a renewed sight of who God is, I'm not talking about the God of your making. I'm not talking about the God of your opinion. I'm talking about the living God of the Word. When you see God as he truly is, the three times holy God, You'll see your sin, and you'll see the sin of the nation. And it'll get you to that place of mourning, that place of saying, woe is me. Same thing happened with Peter, I believe, in Luke chapter 4. They'd been fishing all night. What did Jesus say? Let down your nets for a catch. Peter wanted to argue a little bit, but he did it. So many fish, the nets were about to break. You know what he said? Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. He knew at that instant. Jesus was more than a man. He was God. When he encountered the holiness of God, he saw his sin. If you want to get to that place of mourning that Jesus advocates, you need a renewed sight of God's holiness. Second, you need a renewed sight of your sin. You know what we tend to do? We tend to smooth things up in our lives. We'll say, you know, I'm, I'm an okay guy. Haven't killed anybody. Not this week, right? (laughs) Haven't killed anybody. Don't cheat on my taxes. I'm, I'm just fine. Is that the truth? Not according to the Word of God. According to the Word of God, we're sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We need to come back to that place where we see our sin new and afresh, and mourn over it so we can experience the comfort of God. Uh, yesterday afternoon, after lunch, I, I got on YouTube, and I love watching YouTube sometimes, documentaries and stuff. I'll find things that I didn't know I was looking for. You ever do that before? And I, I found this channel. I didn't watch it too long because it was very sad, but it was basically showing, um, it was interviewing uh, people on death row the day of their execution. And before their final meal, they would interview them, talk to them about their crime. And I thought this was interesting. I watched five or six of these, and the journalist conducting the interview would ask this. Do you think you deserve what you're about to get? I found it interesting, some of the answers. One guy said, no, I I, I don't deserve this. The... Uh, The death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment. He'd killed five people himself, including a sheriff's deputy. But, you know, I I don't believe in the death penalty. I I, I don't believe that. I shouldn't be getting that. But I believe it was about three out of the six interviews that I watched. When they got to that question, that final question, you know what they said? Yeah, I deserve this because I've done worse stuff than than I was sentenced for. They just didn't find out. I did worse stuff than this. You know, in a way, that's us. We think we're good. We think we're fine. But all of us, this pastor standing up here included, has done some bad stuff in God's eyes. We need a renewed sight of that. We need to mourn it because when we mourn, 
There's comfort waiting in the wings. Final renewed sight we need. We need a renewed sight of the world's injustice. As I shared with you earlier, we are bombarded by the headlines, by these stories of death, violence, destruction, and sadness. And we've reached a point where we're desensitized to it. We read of soldiers getting killed. We read of innocent people getting killed and exploited. And we don't bat an eye anymore. Folks, our nation is wonderful. It's the best country on earth. We've got a wonderful justice system, but even in our nation, there's injustice. Even in the best of nations, there's sin and injustice going on. We need to see that again. To see that what sin has done to this land, to this world, and mourn over it, and yearn for that day when Jesus will set things right. When you see the world as it is, you mourn over it. Jesus will bring you comfort. I want to ask you this morning, odd question, are you grieving like you should be? Are you mourning as you should? If you're not mourning, if you are putting on a fake smile, putting up a front, you're being an inauthentic person. God doesn't want you to be that way. He wants you to be real. And He can't use you until you get real. Maybe today you need to come to this altar and say, Lord, it's been a long time since I looked at my sin and scrutinized myself. It's been a long time since I wept in your presence. It's been a long time since the sin of this nation has gripped me and led me to mourn and weep before you. Maybe you need to do that today. Well, the altar is going to be open. And I'm going to invite you to come. Do business with the Lord to come, maybe weep before Him. Come to Him in contrition. Come to Him in mourning. When you mourn, there's comfort. As Brother Terry comes and Miss Debbie plays, invite you as the Holy Spirit moves you to come.